What is up everybody, I am Legend with Ditto Music, and in this video I'm talking about seven audio mixing techniques that every producer needs to know. Coming right up, let's go. Now as always, before we begin, we are partnering with Shure once again to give one of you lucky viewers out there a pair of the Shure SRH840A headphones. All you have to do is be subscribed to this channel and leave a comment down below, maybe letting us know which of these techniques are your favorite. In addition to this, you are on the Ditto Music YouTube channel, which means you might be looking to release your music to the general public. And if that is indeed the case, then you are in the right place because here at Ditto, you can release your music worldwide to all streaming platforms and retain 100% of the royalties that you make from your streams. Plus there's tons of other tools that you can use like publishing and different things like content ID claiming for your YouTube videos. So it might be something that you wanna look into. But now that that's out the way, let's go ahead and get into our techniques. Technique number one is going to be corrective EQ. EQ or equalization is one of the most common ways to tackle a mix and the tough parts of a mix. Basically what you're doing is you're trying to diminish or enhance certain frequencies that are making your song sound bad or that could make your song sound better. EQ is all about the mix of everything cohesively. You wanna make sure that you, at least what I do, is solo my sound as well as playing my sound with the rest of everything else going on in the mix so that I can get a context of what's happening to this vocal or this instrument that I'm changing the EQ of, understanding that, and then applying that to the context of the grander scheme and mixing it with the rest of the song playing as well. Technique number two is going to be da -da -da, compression. This is one of my favorite topics to talk about, even though it's one of the most controversial. As we've talked about before, a compressor is something that reduces the dynamic range of your audio, whatever you're putting it on. And by reducing the dynamic range, what I mean is you're squashing that dynamic range and sort of taming it to a level that you want to have it boxed into. Listen to your songs on a case-by-case -case basis. Listen to all the parts in your songs on a case-by-case -case basis and decide what can't be heard that I want to be heard and how can I assist it so that it is heard in the song. Technique number three is going to be additive EQ. Now, which frequencies you add and which ones are missing that you want to add is up to you, the creator. There's no right or wrong answer because each individual artist has things that they want to emphasize in their song more than others. Some people like really bassy songs, so they want to emphasize the bottom end of their frequency in their song. Meanwhile, other people maybe like a song that sounds more bright and more kind of open-ended. So that's when they would accentuate or enhance the higher frequency ranges, one trick that will teach you kind of more about frequency ranges and know where to add and subtract in every particular song that you're working on is to add an EQ to your project and add a point, right? At this point, you're gonna drag it up maybe halfway up the spectral analyzer and just drag it slowly down all the way to the right side. What's gonna happen is you're gonna see what aspects of a song are being boosted. So ideally you wanna put a song in there. Listen to what is being enhanced, what's being heard, what's being brought up. And that can kind of teach you where certain aspects of a song lie. So when you're dragging it on the left-hand side and you hear that bass kind of rumble a little bit more, you know adding on the left-hand side adds more bass. If you have a lot of hi-hats and you're dragging it all the way to the right-hand side and you hear all of a sudden the hi-hat is more prevalent in your ear, that's because the hi-hat you're using resides in the higher frequency range. It's a higher frequency instrument. Give it a try. Technique number four is going to be adding saturation to your song. And anybody who knows color grading, for instance, knows that saturation is like adding more color to your song, which is why I love this phrase saturation so much. But you wanna be careful about this because saturators also have the ability to really ruin some of your instruments or vocals that you added to. And this is due to the fact that saturators tend to add frequencies that you may have already added yourself. But this is, again, on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on what you want your song to sound like and how much of it you want to add. Technique number five is going to be stereo imaging. So figuring out the placement of your different instruments and vocals in a song in terms of like the sonic room that you're sitting in is just as important as adding any other thing like compressors and saturation and color and things like that. Knowing where these things are placed is going to also help the mix because if you have too many things occupying the entire soundscape, all the same areas, it tends to be, for some people, just bombardment 
of all these sounds. When you have your stereo imaging done right, AKA you're panning your vocals, you're, you're sitting certain instruments in certain ears of the mix, it gives the listener a little bit of ease in knowing what they're hearing instead of this bombardment that I just talked about. Especially if you like stacking your vocals, because if you stack your vocals like me and you have four, eight, 12 stacked vocals, you definitely wanna think about all these things before you decide where to pan and where to place your instrumentation in terms of the stereo image. But once you learn how to do this and once you learn the ins and outs of stereo imaging, I promise it's going to really change the way that you mix your song. Technique number six is going to be reverbs and delays. It creates a sense of room and, and being in a physical place where you're listening to the instrumental or the song that you're listening to. When we're listening to music as we're making it, it sounds like it's all static. Everything is just like kind of like this because there's no effects applied, like I said. And so our job as music producers is to enhance this sound so that it's pleasurable to listen to from the standpoint of the listener. Adding creative plugins like reverbs and delays can not only add color to your song like a saturator, but it adds that room and space to your song and also has a chance to progress a song uh, this is one of my favorite ways to use a delay, for instance. If I have a song where I'm rapping, in this rap there's a lot of pauses or there's breaks where I'm not saying anything. It can be a line that's tied from one line to the next or tying from the verse to the chorus or the chorus to the bridge. I use a delay as a transitional type of effect in addition to it being a creative one. So this is one that I recommend you might wanna try as well. And then reverb is just a sense of creating that space. And a lot of people like to say a psychedelic, vibey, spacey space. Sometimes a reverb can make you feel like you're in a garage. You're trying to create an environment with a reverb. Whether that environment is small or big is up to you and also is up to the song that you're trying to present and how you're trying to present it. So these creative effects like delays and reverbs can help us create a sense of these different types of spaces that we want the listener to live in for a three minutes, you know, however long our song is. So think of it as that and think of how you want to approach it after you decide on, you know, which effects you want to add. And then finally, technique number seven, this is like the most obvious one, but you wanna check the volume of your overall project and also the volume of all of your sounds. So generally what I like to do as I'm making a song is I like to just create and not worry too much about like mixing levels. I'll mix very lightly along the way so that things aren't sounding so out of whack. But at the end of my process is where I check the mix of everything and make sure nothing's going in the, the red or the yellow in terms of my metering. It's all about the storytelling of the song and what you want to shine most. Your vocals, your drums, the guitar solo that you have, your feature, whatever's most important to you. Pay attention to these things and adjust the volume accordingly. It just depends on what your goals are, what you want to achieve, and how you want your song to sound at the end of the mix. Again, listen and decide for yourself. So that is it, seven audio mixing techniques that every producer, and I would say every music maker, needs to know as they're making their music. So go out there and try you know, using these tools if you have any of them so that you can better understand them yourself. And then let us know down in the comments once again which of these techniques that you like the most because you will have a chance to win those SRH840A headphones by Sure for your you know, studio setup. Other than that, leave a like, subscribe. As always, stay legendary and I'm out.